Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Jenna's Beautiful Mess. I'm Jana, and this is week four of the 2021 garden season. Oh, we have a new setup today. Hopefully you're not as close to my face as you have been. I think I've got a setup to get you a little farther away. Also, I've got a microphone on the way, but it's not here yet. After shooting and editing several videos, I've noticed that the video quality on my iPhone here, which is what I'm using, versus the video quality on my G7X, the video quality is actually better on the iPhone than it is on the G7X. And maybe that's my fault. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong, but I haven't been able to figure it out. So I'm just gonna film on my iPhone, but the sound quality is better on the G7X than on the iPhone. So I have a microphone on the way, but it won't be here until next week. So hopefully by next garden tour, we'll have not only this setup that's a little further away from my face, but also a new mic. So the sound quality will be better. The wind is blowing today, so I'm not sure how good it's gonna be. I tried to do it earlier in the morning so that the wind wouldn't be blowing, but we might still have a little bit of wind noise. Hopefully that will be taken care of next week. This is Memorial Day, May 31st, 2021. We are located in zone 7B, just right on the cusp of 8A, central-ish Alabama. Let's get into the garden tour. I'm gonna go ahead and start up here on the steps just in case this is your first garden tour. I'm standing up on the porch right outside our kitchen door. We call this the kitchen garden area. So we've got one, two, three, four, five raised garden beds. So let's start here. These are the peas. We've been harvesting lots of peas off of here in the last week. They're just about spent, as you can see. They'll probably won't be in here for next week's garden tour. We'll see. We had a cold snap yesterday. It was 48 degrees when we woke up, which is incredibly unusual for this time of year. The kale is still doing well. I expected it to be bolted by now. It looks beautiful still. And guys, look at my tomatillo. Remember the first week's garden tour? And that measly little tomatillo that was barely hanging on? My lone tomatillo is, it, it's gonna have to wanna exist. She made a comeback. The parsley. The lettuce. I really didn't expect to show you guys all this stuff again this week, but the cooler weather has made it really happy. These are the ground cherries that I direct sowed. They're doing really well. I'm really happy. This is still that first week. It was little bitty tiny. Here it is now. Look at her stem down there. And all of her glory. You'll probably notice because you watch some of my garden tours that all of my plants are ladies. And this is my garden bed of lettuce. It just makes me happy looking at it. They're going to be defaulting any time now. I'm still enjoying them while I have them. Here's the Russian Red or Ragged Jack Kill. That is Black Magic Kill. I don't know if you remember in the first tour, we have the kohlrabi and they look like they were dying. Well, they have also made a nice recovery. Everything looks pretty happy. Got a little bit of pest pressure going on, but nothing too bad. Sorry if there's wind noise, I'll try to wait until the wind dies down. There's a sucker. That one's too big to pinch off. I'll have to put that. We'll start on the big beds out here, farthest away from the house. These beds are four foot by 20 foot. And these are the leeks. Leeks and then onions. A candy apple, red onions. These are my volunteer tomatoes. I think they're Aussies. I won't know till I see an actual tomato form. Aussies were my favorite cherry tomato last year. And so I started some seeds this year, but none of them germinated. 
but this looks like an Aussie. So that's what I'm hoping that is. From this spot down to the middle are all beefsteaks. And then these are orange persimmons. And so 10 of each. This side from here to the middle are St. Pierre's. Past the St. Pierre, they are Valencia's. So 10 St. Pierre's and 10 Valencia's. And here I stuck in a longevity spinach because this area stays pretty shaded most of the day. These are bunching onions. I think they're like ready. So we just come out and cut stuff whenever we need bunching onions for things. And these are more candy apple red onions. The flowers just bring me so much joy. I did not realize how much joy the flowers would bring. This is the second garden bed, the one in the middle. Starting here, we have tomatoes. These are clementines. Pretty excited about these. They are the first to set fruit. Got some Swiss chard. This is the Swiss chard that I direct so Spinach, still hanging on. It's clementine from here to here. So again, another 10. We've been harvesting some carrots. I've been trying to thin them out. I'll pull some and they'll be little bitty tiny like that. And I can also, let's see if I can find one. Let's see what we got here. Woohoo! look at that one. That looks like a carrot. That's pretty exciting. It's my first time to ever grow carrots successfully, at least somewhat successfully. These are 10 Cherokee purple tomatoes. They've got lots and lots of blossoms. So that's super exciting. I don't see a whole lot of fruit set yet though, but that's okay. It'll come. More Swiss chard. And then here we've got some Detroit red beets. And they're getting closer. There we go. Now, here's a good example. See the flowers down here? Are in full bloom. Pretty glorious. They're kicking it. They're in their prime. These are the same flowers planted the same day, but they're in the shade more of the day than the ones down there. On this side, we've got purple Russian tomatoes. To that middle right there so 10 purple russian tomatoes then what's left of the butterhead lettuce still doing pretty well i've been coming out and just harvesting entire heads here's a good example of the lettuce that's about to bolt see how tall it's getting just need some chickens and then i could feed them greens <laughs> such beautiful colors these are cosmos from here in the middle all the way to the end are mortgage lifters. Mortgage lifters produced the most for us last year. And under here are the peppers that I transplanted. They're doing pretty well. I'm pretty happy about them. There's some of them though, like these. Let's see, let me get closer. You see how they're curled? Anybody know what causes that? Look what I found. So we've got the peppers, but they're kind of wrinkly, but they're doing okay. Some of them have peppers on them. I've never really grown peppers much before. They may be too shaded. I don't know. Bed three, more beautiful flowers. Happy makers. How's that carrot? Hi. Got the root there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From here down to there at the middle are vintage wine tomatoes. I just put in the eggplant transplants probably within a week. We are getting some pretty heavy pest damage. I've done some research. See those little guys right there? Pretty sure those are flea beetles. I came out and sprayed them with water hose yesterday really roughly and they were pretty gone this morning, but some of them are back. I'll have to figure out a good treatment for them. If anybody knows one, please feel free to share. If you have any natural or organic remedies, we'd love to hear them. From here to the very end are brandy wine tomatoes. 10 vintage wine and 10 brandy wine. More flowers. None of my marigolds came up this year, so I'm not sure. I need to re so see if it was just how cold or something else. Here's some more beets that I transplanted in earlier in the season. 
I just don't really feel like they're right. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. If you have beet secrets, please share them with me. Beets to here. And then more spinach down here in the shade. I need to sell more flowers there. More spinach. And then on this side, we have cherry tomatoes all the way down. So 20 of them. These I have alternating. Every other one is Matt's Wild Cherry and Atomic Grape. And then Matt's Wild Cherry and then Atomic Grape. I've pruned them down to one main liter like the others as well. But I've been doing some research and watching a couple videos. And people say not to do that with your cherry tomatoes. Like if you want them to produce a whole lot. Luckily I have 20 of them so we'll probably be fine. But next year I may take a different approach with my cherry tomatoes. But it is so humid here it might not work. I'm just not sure yet about that. But we'll try. This is black seeded Simpson lettuce. I bought it because I watched somebody talk about how it was good for summer, but then I sowed it and it's been the first one to get tall and it's bitter now and it's just not very good. So I haven't been impressed with the black seeded Simpson. It's supposed to be for heat, but I'm not impressed. Extra heads of romaine that I stuck um, along the edge here. Yes, baby. The Aisha found something that looks like a mole head. A mole head? All right. Must mean the cats are doing their job. Time for snacks. <laughs> Sorry about that. And we've got more Swiss chard here. That's pretty. These are the notapinos. No, they're. These are culapenos that Elliot picked up at the store for me. They're this Bonnie brand. I wanted some not hot jalapenos this year. More deal. Whole thing is cilantro. Some of it has bolted. Some of it hasn't. And I'm just gonna let it reseed itself so that it will come back. Oh, and I tucked in some basil in this little corner. I don't know, the beginning of the season. That's the third bed. I don't think I included the strawberries last time. I have them in these green stalk planters that I had unstacked to top off with compost. And then I was gonna put some mulch in them. And I topped them off with compost and then I didn't get the mulch put in quick enough. And then they grew so quickly that I don't wanna restack them because I don't wanna smash them. So I've just been leaving them like this and the kids can come out here and harvest them. I'll restack them and I'm not worried about smashing them. Here's what it looks like from the road. Like this is our driveway, standing on the driveway. And here's what the garden looks like from the road. I'm pretty pleased. I'll show you what the back garden looks like from the road too. Okay, here's the same driveway. Pest control. Here's the road, Keep driving on the road. And there's the back garden. That should do it for the kitchen garden area. So now let's go around back and I'll show you what we've got over there. Here we are in the back garden area. I'm standing up on top of the steps again so you can get more of a clear vision of everything. This is the garden area that was put in in the garden transformation video. And then there's another 30 foot bed that I'll show you in a minute. Pretty pleased with how the onions are looking so far. White onions on this side, red onions on the other. Here we've got hybrid yellow squash down to about halfway. From there down to the end is zucchini squash. Here on the sides, flowers. There's cosmos and calendula, marigolds, all the way down. And on this side, I'm super excited about the ones on this side. Anybody know what those are? Nasturtiums. I'm excited. I've never grown nasturtiums before. They all came up. I'm super happy about. So I've got a red one and a purple one. So I tried to alternate red, purple, red, purple. All the way down. The corn patch is looking lovely. And this is our tomato overflow garden. There's 
32 tomato plants in this bed, 16 on each side, and 32 in this bed. And then, I don't know, another 14 or 15 in this bed. These are Amish paste all the way down, and we don't have Amish paste in the kitchen garden. These are the ones I was growing for canning. But as you can see, the ones in this garden are not nearly as happy and monstrous as the ones in the raised bed kitchen garden. And there could be a number of different factors for that. First of all, I got these in the ground way too late, so they could have been pretty stressed when I put them in, and it's taken them a while to recover. These were all started on the same dates as the ones in the kitchen garden. You can see there's quite a difference. These, since this is a no-dig bed, they can only go down as far as the cardboard. The roots are not gonna be as deep as the ones in the kitchen garden. Now next year that'll be different because the cardboard will be disintegrated into the soil and the roots will be able to go down as far as they need but right now they're not it's drier back here it retains moisture better in the kitchen garden than it does back here but once again I, this is the first year for all of this stuff in this garden i think it'll be much better next year it's a fun experiment we've got lots and lots of tomato plants so it's fun to see how these do versus the ones in the kitchen garden versus the ones in full sun against the ones in partial shade so it's been kind of a fun experiment so far the longevity spinach back here it's finally going strong these are determinate tomato plants I did some pruning on them the other day which I know is controversial but I only pruned the stems right here that would not produce fruit so just the sun leaves the rest of it I just let go same thing with this one just sun leaves that I trimmed off left the suckers this one I haven't done anything to I thought I might save it for the tomato pruning video that I'm working on so that you can see how I prune a determinate versus an indeterminate tomato over here I had a few extra basils so I stuck one in here and one down there at the very end these are my cucumber transplants that we trellised they look pretty happy. I think they're doing pretty well. We'll see. Next year, I probably won't plant cucumbers and tomatoes right next to each other because this cucumber keeps coming over here. I want to be friends with this guy. They look good. I'm happy. These are the whole potatoes that we planted. And they're starting to come up. That one's broken through. It's doing a great job. See this one? can see them when they're about to start doing their thing they start breaking through I hope we get some this year last year's experiment was a miserable failure we got poison hay and that was the end of that I tried the roof stout bed and apparently my hay had terrible things in it this bed here is the bed that we planted with the potato chips which are the little pieces of potatoes but I didn't plant them until the 25th and I planted those on the 18th. This it'll take these probably another week or so to start breaking through. That's it for this garden. Oh, I have a funny story about this. One day when I was out here planting this garden, I had all my seeds up on the porch in a box or something. And I had the ones that I was planting down here with me and Raylan picked out a seed. He decided to plant it over here. I was like, okay, sure, stick it in the ground over there. We'll water it. And I made sure to water it for him every time we came through. Don't worry about it, we'll figure it out. Then probably three or four days later, he comes running in the house and he was like, mommy, mommy, my seed, my seed sprouted. I said, it did, take me, show me. So he brought me out. And looky there, he has got something growing. And I said, well, that looks like a squash or something. Can you take me and show me which packet you got the seed out of? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he took me up there and he showed me and it was a sugar pie pumpkin packet. So we put a tomato cage on it so that we wouldn't accidentally run over it with a lawnmower or something. So we may have a pumpkin vine growing right here in the entrance of our backyard garden, but that's okay. He's so excited. Such a fun learning experience for him. Now we're gonna walk over to the last garden bed. It's a four foot by 30 foot garden bed. Right now it's where most of the brassicas are. I just transplanted all the watermelons in here. I'm still not sure how the watermelon thing is gonna work out. I know this trellis will not hold them. It's just a temporary solution. So I'm just not sure. We will figure something out.
More kale, curly kale. I think this was a Brussels sprout. I went to seed. Cantaloupe. More cantaloupe and then watermelon. This right here is where all of the spicy peppers are. All the non-spicy peppers are over in the kitchen garden area, but the spicy peppers are back here. I think I mentioned it in the last garden tour, but just in case I didn't, this bed back here, I think, is where I've decided that I'm gonna transplant my asparagus to, but I can't do that until it's dormant. So I'm just planting it in it right now for fun. And then come for the winter when the asparagus is dormant, then I'm gonna transplant it into this bed so that it will be closer to the house. Cause right now it's so far away, it's sort of out of sight, out of mind, and it's in really bad shape. So I wanna put it here so that it will be close and more easily taken care of. Let me just show you. I'd like to set up this concrete table and benches over there where the top soil and things are, or right here, somewhere underneath this big, beautiful tree. I wanna be able to sit here at my table, with this in the background, and talk with you. Like if I have a video where I just wanna sit down and chat, I would like to be able to do it right here. That is a future project, because that table is a monster. That's it for this week's garden tour. Thanks so much for joining me. Also, we have a Facebook group now, Janice Beautiful Mess. If you love gardening and you wanna come over there and join us and see more real-time updates on what we've got going on here, just head on over there and join us. I'll put a link below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the little bell notification. Talk to you later.